Hey guys, welcome back to SFTC Quest. In this class, let's explore one more Apex concept that might come in handy when you are writing your code. So let's get started. Imagine you're walking on this wire and there is a building A and there is a building B. The task is to reach B on this wire. Imagine these buildings are 20 storage high of equal height. This example looks scary, but think for a moment and you have to do this task. You do not have any option, but you have to do it. Think for a moment, keep the scary part aside. And if you start walking on this wire, even though if there is a pole that is given to give you that balance, you would be still having a trouble saying that, what if I fall down? What if something goes wrong? What if I lose balance? So it is a common fear that everyone would have when we are doing such tasks that two at a 20 storage high building. Now, imagine the same example, but this time I have a safety net at the bottom so that even though if anything goes wrong, I have your back. Now, will you do this task? I know the answer still would be no. The intensity of this no is comparatively less in scenario two. The reason being, you have a safety net. If everything goes, goes fine, there is no need of that net. If anything goes wrong, that is where that safety net comes into play and you will be safe. Now, if you have understood this concept, you have pretty much understood the concept that we are going to learn today, which is nothing but try and catch. So what exactly this try and catch is? So just like how we are trying to walk from building A to building B, there could be some kind of things that might go wrong. We might not be sure that what might go wrong. Either you might lose the balance or you might kind of slip or there might be a heavy wind that might push you down. So if anything goes wrong here, there is a safety net that is catching you. Similarly, when you try writing some code, you would put that in a try block and tell the system that if anything goes wrong, catch the exception that it is throwing. So in short, we are putting a safety net to the code that we are writing. Now, why do you think the safety net is important? For a user who is using the application, when he clicks on a account record and there is some logic that you have written and upon clicking on save, he sees a big error message saying that some exception that has come up. Would that be a good user experience? The answer is no. Why? Because as a developers, we know what that error means and what we need to do for that user. He might not know what exactly he has to do with that error, right? He'll be confused as like this person who is walking on this wire. For that reason, what we wanted to do, we wanted to have a mechanism which would catch that exception. The user would not be seeing that error message. So internally, we are handling that error. We are keeping a track of that error that is thrown to the user. Now, does that mean that the task that the user is intended to do is completed? The answer is no. There was an exception. System is not allowing us to do something, but the user is not being presented with the error. But as a developers, we can have a mechanism in terms of tracking what happened at that point of time. So that is where your try catch block method comes into picture. So just like how we are doing a task of walking from building A to building B, on a wire and we have a mechanism that catches if something goes wrong. So that is what this concept is all about. Without any delay, let's get started in terms of understanding the syntax with a simple example that we have. So I am on my developer console. I've opened my anonymous window just like how we used to do. So I have a simple code, line number one and line number two, a simple piece of code. Now feel free to give it a try. If I run this code, will I get any error or not? Feel free to pause this video in case if you need a second. In three seconds, I'll reveal the answer in three, two, one. Let's go ahead and execute this code. So if you look at line number one, we are asking the system to query for a record and that account record has been taken and we are asking the system to give the industry value to this string. That is what we are doing. Let's go ahead and execute this code and see what would happen. I'm selecting only two lines and I'm clicking on execute highlighted. So as soon as I do that, there is an 
error that is being presented for me. What is the error that we are presented with? Let me quickly grab that error and paste it here so that it would be easier for you to look at it. So I'll just paste it here. So this is the error that we have presented with. Right. So what is this error talking about? You are trying to use an industry field, but that record is not being queried in the SOQ. So this is an error message that upon reading as a developers, we would understand what went wrong. The fix for this one is to add that industry field in the query, right? Because I'm taking this variable called A, which is an account. For that account, I'm asking the industry value to be assigned to this string value. So if I add this industry field to this query, that is where my issue would be fixed. But for the end user, he or she might not know what to do with this error. So what is happening? We are kind of presenting this error directly to the end user, which would be not a good experience. Now what we can do, this error can come from any part of the code. Let's say if I click on account record and that is where let's say I have seen this error, right? So which is not a good user experience for the user, right? Let's say this piece of code can be anywhere in your logic. And if it is throwing an error, that is where the user would not have a good experience. Let's say if I click on edit and click on save, if that error is shown to the end user like this, somewhere here, that is where it is not a good experience for them, right? So because they are the people who are using the system, but they do not know what is going in the background. It is our responsibility to make sure that the user experience to the end user is smooth always. Now, how do we counter this error? Let's say, usually we do not kind of leave this error as it is. I'm taking this example so that way you know how to handle your errors. The intention of this video is to help you understand how can you handle such exceptions within your code. Now, I do not want to show the error to the end user, but rather I want to handle it within my code. How do you do it? Just like how we are setting up the safety net. We're asking the system to put this logic. What we can do, we can put the logic that you think might throw an exception in your try block. I've written try, opened a curly base and closed a curly base at the end of my code. And post that, I need to put a catch block. What is this catch block? This catch block is like your safety net. What is the job of your safety net? Your job of your safety net is whenever there is something that is going wrong, this safety net or your catch block should catch hold of it. Now, what can go wrong in your code? You might get some exception within your code, right? So if you see here, there is an exception that has been thrown whenever that query field is not being Whenever there is a field that has been used, that has not been queried. So that is an exception that has been thrown within your code. Whenever there is a exception in your code, that is where your catch block comes into picture. If there is no exception, this two lines of code would be executed and your catch block would never execute, right? So once you cross from point A to point B, there is no need of a safety net. If something goes wrong, that is where your catch block comes into picture. What do we have in this catch block? We have a couple of things that we can do. Either you can capture the error. How do you do this? If you have a custom object to catch hold of these exceptions, you can go ahead and insert that record whenever there's an exception. So that is one way of doing it. In case if you want to track it within the transaction by using a debug log, you can also do that. So one is like keeping your custom object to track anything that comes up as an exception. You can save that record. And somebody asks you what went wrong with this record, you can check that record and say, this is what has happened. And you can either ask the user to correct the data, or if there is any code changes, you can go ahead and work on them and fix it accordingly. The second way is like putting a debug log. This is a temporary thing. So until unless you reproduce that issue or you have a proper debug log when the issue happened, this approach comes into picture. Else you can create a custom object and save a record whenever there's an exception. So for time being, what we'll do, we'll take the second route here. Feel free to try the first approach. All you need to do is create the fees for which you wanted to save the information from the exception and tag the record that is going through the save process. In case if you need a user, tag that user also when you're inserting that record and finally write an insert DML on that record. So I'm just skipping that part. I'm just writing a system.debug here. And what do we have here? 
So let's say I'm just simple writing a debug log saying that exception occurred. I'm just printing that exception that is being captured. All right, so that is what I'm doing. Now let's run the same code and see what would happen. Earlier we have seen a pop-up saying that a subject row was retrieved via SQL without querying the request field. Account dot industry is a pop-up that we have received. If this code has been used within your actual logic or in either in your handler class, that is where the user would be presented with that error on the record that they're interacting. So now what I'll do, I'll just execute this piece of code and see what would happen. Now, if you see here, there was no exception that came. That means the transaction went fine. But did I make any change in the code? This piece of code is exactly same as what I've done in line number one and two. But the transaction didn't fail. The reason for that is the transaction did fail, but what we did, we have captured the exception. So if you see here, there was an exception in the debug log, exception thrown, the same error that we have seen here, account.industry. What happened differently here? We have a catch block, which would catch that exception rather than displaying it to the end user. So that is how you would use your try catch block. Now you might be wondering, is this the only information that we can capture from the exception? So if you see line number 50 in the debug log, let's quickly do one thing. So let's ask the system, are there any debug logs printed? Let's quickly check this checkbox. And if you see, there's on line number nine, from counting from here, this is line number nine, an exception occurred, which is this part, and it is presenting system to pass a subject row was retrieved, the same error that we were looking at. Now, are there any other information that we can track? Let's say I wanted to understand on which line the error came up and what is the error message, right? If I want those details, how can I ask the system to give me specific details rather than showing the entire error message? That is where you can use a couple of methods that were present in your exception. So I'm pasting a couple of methods that we can use for our exception tracking. All right, so we have get type name, get message, get the cause, get the line number, get the stack trace. All right, so these are the couple of methods that you can use in terms of better understanding or better tracking your error. Let's say you want to write the, on which line the exception occurred when you're tracking it at the object level. So that is where you can use this method rather than writing E value in your custom object field. So now I've added a couple of debug logs here. Let's quickly run this code. I've not made any change in the try block. Still, we would be seeing an error, but it would be caught in the exception. In the catch block, I've written a couple of debug log to better understand this exception and which line it has been captured. So let's quickly execute it. I'll not see any exception thrown by the console, but rather in the debug log, if I check for debug logs only, that is where it would show me a couple more details. So if you see line number nine is the previous exception that I've printed on line number 10, it is talking about what kind of a exception that has been thrown. What exception that we are seeing? A subject exception is what we are seeing. And what is the message? This is the message. So this is the part of the piece that we are printing. A subject row was retrieved via SQL without querying the requested field. And what is the cause? Null. And on which line it has been printed? It is printed on line number three. It is printing on line number three because this is the place where the exception started. So this is line number one. This is line number two. This is line number three. So where is the stack trace? Stack trace is nothing but it is like a path that helps you understand from where the call has happened and where exactly the issue is. Since I'm calling it from the anonymous window, you see anonymous block line number three, column number one. So if it is from a class, it would give you the stack trace saying that this class has been called from a trigger and the trigger might be calling the handler class. It would give you the stack trace from where exactly the call has started. So that is how you can basically make use of these methods to write the information according to your requirement. So if you wanted to print it a debug log, you can use it as a debug log statement, or you can use the same field information to pass this information into a custom field that has been created under your custom object. So that is how you would make use of your try catch blocks. If you're unsure that your code might throw an exception, put that in your try catch block and either log that exception into your custom object or put some debug log so that way it would be easier for you to track that in the future. That is the end of this video. I hope you have got the concept of 
by catch block in case if you have liked this video do like share and subscribe to our channel sftc quest reach out to us in case if you have a specific request on the next topic and we'll prioritize that accordingly happy coding hey guys if you like this video do like share and subscribe to sftc quest